Hi there and welcome to Easy Mind, Easy Life. I'm Holly Bell. <laughs> welcome back. So, as I was talking you through my episodes with my gallbladder attacks, and I've had three so far, and the, the three have been three different things, you know, like each experience uh, has been different. Uh, the first one was really about trusting that my body can heal itself. I didn't have that trust in my body yet, that faith. The second one was about surrendering. The second time I was in the hospital was about, it's not in my control. When it's my time to go, it's my time to go. You know? And it's about just making the most of the time you've got here. This time around, I'm in the hospital with this gallbladder attack. And I'm really, really in tune with what my body's trying to say. You know, I could feel as I would pick up something to eat, I could already feel it saying, no, I don't want that, you know? Or I'd take something to drink and it would be like, no, I don't want that. And I felt like it needed to clean out, you know? It needed to purge, to, uh, it was saturated, you know, with, with too much food, too much food, um, thoughtless food. You know, we just put it in, we just eat it, put it in, eat it. We don't give a second thought for what's going in, you know, or for whether the body wants it or not. You know, the body has its own beautiful intelligence, the intelligence that is in all things. And you are a beautiful spirit that lives inside of this vessel called the body. And the intelligence that is in you, that beautiful life force energy, is also running through your body. Every cell has its own intelligence. And the thing that I got to take away from this weekend in the hospital, I spent two days there, the Saturday and the Sunday. On the Sunday they released me, they said I could go home. But I realized as I'm sitting there with my body and I'm looking down at my stomach because that's where the pain is, right? My gallbladder, the whole stomach area, just right where the stomach is, all along that belt, actually, all along there under. And I thought to myself, all the thoughts I've had up until this day about my stomach have been that it's not good enough. You know, at one point I was a gym instructor and I looked amazing. Now I look back at the photos, I think, what was wrong with me? <laughs> but I would still look in the mirror and think, oh, you know? And your body tries so hard, you know, to keep you alive, to keep things going. The stomach digests all this food for you, whether it wants it or not, you know, whether you just shove it in there, like, you know, just be quiet, or, you know, if you're hungry, just have that, just stuff it down. <laughs> you know, whether you have that attitude or whether you thoughtfully think, you know, oh, okay, I'm going to eat this because this is nourishment for me, for my body, for my for my stomach. My stomach's going to appreciate, you know, that I've put this in there. But more importantly than any of that was that never since I was about 12, I think, 12, 13, and you get to that age where you start to see magazines with the beautiful supermodels and you start to see the beautiful actresses on TV and the movies and you start to see what perfect bodies perfect bodies look like and you look at yours and you think it doesn't look anything like that and from then on you're always looking at it like it's not good enough no matter how good my body has been it's never been good enough and you know I I honestly have to say I've always looked at my stomach with disgust with disapproval even though, you know, after the whole gym days of, you know, all that hard work and I looked amazing, even then I still looked at it with disapproval. It wasn't good enough, no matter how flat my stomach got. It was never good enough, poor thing. But it was the fact that, you know, we look at it with disgust. We look at the stomach with disapproval. It's not good enough. And every time you look at your stomach and you have those thoughts, 
the body's listening because it is intelligent. And I realized as I'm sitting there in my bed, in the hospital, my stomach's reaching out to me because all it wants, like everything else in this universe, is to be loved, to be loved, to feel loved for the job it does. It keeps me alive. It digests my food every day. And today I'd like you to think about the relationship you have with your stomach and your body. If there are parts of your body that you look at with disgust, with disapproval, parts of your body that are not good enough. Because the truth is that that's a projection of you onto your body. You're not good enough. And so you project that onto your body. And every time you do, every time you look at your body without the eyes of someone that really loves the vessel they've been given, your body's listening. And it stores that for you. Not like revenge or, you know, oh, I'm going to get you back for that. <laughs> it doesn't work that way, but it's serving you. Everything in the world is serving you. It is showing you. It's reflecting back to you how you are seeing the world. You are looking at the world. You're looking at things not good enough, not good enough, not good enough. That not good enough keeps coming back to you like waves. It's trying to show you these are your thoughts this is what you think about yourself not good enough so today I'd really like you to sit with with your body and it's not a question of um, saying oh I love you but not feeling it in your heart it's a question of understanding why there is a disapproval of that part of your body Maybe it's not working the way you want it to work. But, as I said before, everything in this life is serving you in the highest. Whatever that is in your body that's not working, it has a message for you. It has a lesson. It's an experience you are here to have. So I made a promise to my stomach that I would never do that again. I apologized as if I was talking to a person, you know, because it is intelligent and it is listening. And I chose this vessel to move around in when I came. Why not give love for it? So I promised it every day that I would give love. I would give love for it and I would be patient and I would allow it to heal in its own time. No rush. If I eat something and it's not happy with that, that's fine. We'll try something else. But I'm finding now as I'm more listening and I'm more in a loving space with my body that I tend to think of what I'm going to eat and I wait for a response. And I'll hear a yes or a no. Like I, I hear a definite no if it's something. I used to love drinking hot cocoa in the morning, but I drink cacao, like the pure stuff with maca powder. And it's been a few mornings where I ask, can I have that now? And the stomach's like, no, I'm not ready, dude. <laughs> so I'm like, okay. You know, it's not something I miss a lot. I miss my chocolate more than anything else. But, you know, um, baby steps, right? Baby steps. I did end up doing the huge cleanse that my naturopath had taught me the first time with my gallbladder and released over 40 stones like there were so many of them <laughs> the poor body was like overloaded with these cholesterol stones with all this gunk and it was like this huge you know once it all came out um even when i drank the mix you know that you make for the purge for the stones um usually i gag i like i can't i find it really hard to swallow the whole thing no matter how fast i try to chug it down I usually hold it down, I don't throw it up, 
but this time when it went down, I didn't feel anything but, oh, thank you. The body knew straight away what we were doing. It was like, wow, thank you. You know, I can finally get rid of all this gunk. And uh, yeah, I felt really weak yesterday because a lot comes out and um, you're on the toilet a lot for the next day <laughs> after you do the, the cleanse. But just so much, I felt so much better already, even though I was, you know, the body felt so tired from the episode. Um, I, I felt better. I knew that we were on the right track and I was going, I'm on my way to healing, you know. But I keep telling it every day. It is healed. You are healed. You know, I'm holding you in that space where you are healed. And I'm waiting for you ready, you know, for that day. So, yeah, if I tend to have a body that, you know, likes to produce gallstones, I guess um, I'm going to have to learn to do the cleanse at least once a year because so far the attacks have been every five years. That's what the doctor was saying. So he said it's not so bad to have the operation. And the operation has no guarantee that um, for success and worse, it 90% of the cases that have an operation in what's left <laughs> of what I've got um, end up in pancreatitis. So I thought, mm, you know what? No, <laughs> I know what to do now. You know, I, as I was sitting there, I'm talking to the angels and they said to me, just do the cleanse. And I'd been trying to do it for two weeks. But online, they teach you to do it, drinking apple juice for two weeks first to soften them. And I had been trying to drink the apple juice, but it kept coming back up. And I should have just done the simple cleanse that my naturopath had taught me without the apple juice. If I'd have done that earlier, I'd have avoided putting the codeine in, aggravating it more. But I guess I needed those two weeks, you know? I needed those two weeks to wake up to really start listening to my body and um, getting more in tune with its conversation because it is constantly talking to me. It's just that I wasn't listening before. All right, my darlings. So today I encourage you, please sit with your body and start asking questions. We're going to talk in the next one about the food because I realized something else that was super important as well. Uh, when I was in the hospital, but I'm trying to not keep them too long. All right, for those of you who are always in a hurry and have little time to listen. I love you, my darlings. Remember to click like and subscribe so you don't miss any of the messages and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.